All right, y'all, welcome back to another custom Christmas lights video. So if you've been following along, I've got this empty socket light line with 12 inch spacing. I'm making my own custom Christmas lights this year. It's in Florida. Today we're into November and I'm already sweating. It's always a blessing when you can uh, sweat while you're putting up your Christmas lights. But what I wanted to show you today is, is kind of answer some questions people have been asking about polarity with these Christmas lights, as well as the maximum number of Christmas lights or the maximum length and how all that kind of works. So I'm actually making a new strand here. And so what I'm gonna have to do is put on a male and female plug on each end. And this is where polarity comes into play. So if you look down at um, a female plug, you'll notice that this one on the right right here, this is a smaller slot, and the one on the left here is a longer slot. The one on the right, that is the hot side, and the one on the left is the neutral. That's what polarity is. And inside your house, that's extremely important that that lines up. You'll also notice that on the male plug, to keep you from messing up your polarity, you have one of these uh, poles is fatter than the other. So that way these can only marry up one way. You can't put them on the wrong way. They can only marry up so that the polarity is correct. You'll also see because we're making our own plugs, when you actually plug in the male into the female here, you'll get these leads that pop up. And when you see them pop up, you'll notice that they are offset one for one wire and one for the other. And that's because the wire we're using is called 18-2 or 18 gauge two wire or two lead. And so you have one of these um, prongs, I'm, again, I'm not an electrician, so I use the wrong terminology here, but each of these prongs, one will go into one wire and one will go into the other. And if you're following polarity, I say if, because you don't have to, we'll tell you in a minute. But if you were, you'd have to make sure this lined up all the way through. So example, on this 18 gauge wire, you can see that one wire has white writing on it and the other one doesn't. So when you lined up your plugs and you put your plugs on every time, you'd have to have the same prong going into the same white lettering and same non-lettering each time. That's if you had to keep your polarity correct. The good news is with these modern day LEDs, you do not have to worry about polarity. You can put that plug on this way, you can put it on that way. When you're doing your inline vampire plugs, you can put it on this way or that way. It does not matter. Now I can't guarantee that with everyone else's LEDs that they're selling, but the ones that we have on our website, I have double, triple checked with our supplier that when it comes to the LEDs that we're selling here with this wire, you do not have to worry about polarity. So you can put your, your plugs on whatever way is most comfortable for you and you're good to go. And just to be sure, if you don't believe us, we actually checked with ChatGTP, Nick, my camera guy, he's young and he, he uses ChatGTP and ChatGTP agreed with us too. But one thing I did wanna say, is this is an incandescent string, and we're gonna use this in a minute to look at amperage, but this is an incandescent string. If you are using incandescent C9s or C7s, then polarity does matter. It's a big deal. Now, I don't use incandescent, and I'll show you why in a minute, but LEDs, polarity doesn't matter. These modern day ones that you get from our website, polarity doesn't matter. But if you're using incandescents or maybe somebody else's older LEDs, it does. So just know that before you go into it. All right, now the next thing people ask is, how many lights or how long of a strand can you use with one plug? And so this is again, 18 gauge wire. And so it does have a maximum to it and it has a maximum of how many bulbs you can put on it, but also a maximum length because as the way that the AC power works, there's voltage loss, the longer the run is and also the more bulbs you put on. So if you're using the same stuff that I sell, this 18 gauge wire, the maximum length you can use is 250 feet. And that includes if you made jump cords or if you made uh, an extension cord. So I've got my map here and I'm at 230, let me just make sure, 232, 235. So the run we're gonna show you today is 235 feet. It's this edge here, one of the hips and another edge. And we're gonna use this, this is a kilowatt meter. And I'm gonna show you the amps because not only is there a max length of 250 feet on this 18 gauge wire, there's a max amperage of 2.5 amps. And again, that's what the bulbs are pulling. So we need to test that just to make sure that we're within our limits and we're not gonna overload the wire. All right, so this is that custom extension cord I used using the lamp wire. Now just so you know, the lamp wire is the exact same wire that's on the empty socket light line. It just doesn't have the sockets on it. So that's why you have to count the length of your extension cord in our calculation. Again, 235 feet. And then again, it's got lights on it, a couple jump cords, all of that, 235 feet total. So I'm gonna take my kilowatt meter and I'm gonna plug it in right here. And by the way, y'all, I know this isn't correct, okay? This, this needs a cover and everything. This is just for this video so you can see things a little bit better. So we're gonna put this in here. It's gonna fire up there. And then we're gonna just plug into it 
and the lights will come on up there. And it's gonna tell me how many amps I have. I'm pulling 1.1 amps right now. So not even close to my max of 2.5, we're good to go. But you say, could you add more lights? Well, I could, but I'm already at, at close to my maximum 250. I've got 15 feet to spare, but I don't have a 15 foot section to do. The reason this would come in is you might run 250 feet, but if you have six inch spacing, your amperage might be higher. So that's the key. And we also sell this in, I think, 15 inch spacing which uh, would not pull as much amps, but again, the maximum length for this 18 gauge wire is 250 feet no matter what. Now I'll put up a chart that'll kind of show you some other calculations that you might wanna make in case you do have six inch spacing or 15 inch spacing. Most of you are probably gonna go with the 12 inch because you're doing what I'm doing and I think the 12 looks the best, but here's a chart for you if you do wanna look at some other calculations. Now, just to give you guys a little compare and contrast, these are old school incandescent lights right here, okay? I've already broken one bulb. They're, these are glass, this is why you're, you should be so glad you don't have to use these anymore. But I just wanna show you, this is 25 bulbs. Now these are six inch spacing, 14 feet. Don't worry about the length on this, we're fine there. I just wanna show you the amperage that these draw. So I have 25 lights. On the last one I had 235 feet, probably at least 200 of that was lights. So 200 of the LEDs pulled 1.2 amps. Let me show you what just 25 incandescence pulls. 1.4. 1.43, so 25 incandescents, old school, they are beautiful though, that pulls 1.4 amps, whereas a little over 200 of the LEDs only pulled 1.2. So now you see the big advantage to the LEDs, even though, gosh, these are beautiful. Now, I'm gonna do um, a video coming up where I compare my LEDs, which I think are the closest you can get to looking like incandescents. We're gonna compare them in the dark just so I can show you. So that'll be coming in an upcoming video. I also have a full playlist if you wanna check that out with all of the Christmas light videos where I've showed you step-by-step step everything that I've been doing for my custom Christmas lights this year. And all of this is available on our websites on Yard Mastery and thelawncarenut.com. With that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I wish you a Merry Christmas and I'll see you up on the road.